Matt and Moko, really cool. In our third meal in two hours. That's that's a good ratio. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Enjoy this view first. Then, first dinner. Oh, yeah. Dude, yes, perfect. Hey everyone, what's up? I am at my house. I'm in Thailand. Today, this whole week, I've been going through different memories that I had, basically getting some shared motivation and sharing maybe what we've learned on trips with my buddy Mark as part of Team Migrationology. Right now, I'm about to call my friend Matt. He works with the YouTube channel Ras Kitchen, but he actually has so many more projects going on. Anyways, I'm gonna call my buddy Matt. Thank you for joining. Let's see if he's up. What do you mean? Of course he's up. I'm the one drinking coffee. Yes. Uh, how's it going, man? It's a good morning. It's cool. It's maybe it's 17, 18 centigrade. Well, that's pretty cool for there, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Got coffee. Everything's good, man. What did you get awesome. up to today? We got some cool weather here, too. I gotta check it, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is it minus two? My <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, That's awesome. Normally I'd be in Jamaica right now, I'm yeah, yeah. warm on that, but yeah, not at the moment. So the videos that you're working on right now, are they all from the last trip? Are you, do you ever run out of yeah, content for? I was there in October, mm. for most of October. Oh, okay. So it's all, all from that. Oh, okay. So normally I'd be going back around now or yeah. maybe in a month or two, but Oh, things are gonna be, get put on hold for a little bit. You know? Had you been there between when we were hanging out with you and October? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's September, October. So, yeah, I got there twice in 2020. Cool. Uh, it's cool. So you guys, you guys are uh, living in Thailand. Just kind of could could go, but not sure if things will change. So better to stay put. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think I could pretty much leave and go many places, but wouldn't be able to come back. So I'm just enjoying the time, like being forced to focus on Thailand, which is fine, which is really fine. I'm, I'm amazed you guys are putting up, well, you yourself with yeah. so much coming up on your channel and yeah. Mark, and there's so much you can explore right, right there. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now we're doing like an interview with you. It's been 10 months until I finally felt like I need to do something, something creative or change up a little bit, which which has been a blessing, right? To have, I haven't really had to worry about anything. Only the light restrictions on interprovincial travel. But, so if that's all it is. So man, in light of not knowing what we're gonna be able to do as far as any plans for the future, like how have you stayed optimistic about stuff? Yeah, for me, it's just, enjoying what's around, you know, if you're limited yeah. to your own place, there's still tons to explore, especially when you're forced to, so yeah. being in the city here, doing a ton of walking, which I oh, okay. didn't do a lot of, but doing my 10,000 steps a day and seeing yeah. every neighborhood and every street and every back alley in like a 5 cool, radius from here to the lake, like I'm yeah. exploring so much that I probably wouldn't have that's awesome. Otherwise. Yeah, and just really kind of doing a microscope on local stuff. Which is I can't remember the name of the, is it a vehicle? Yeah, the one wheel vehicle with no hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so yeah, cool. The electric unicycle. Okay. The ocean. So <laughs> yes. I'm riding the hell out of that thing. Yes. I like, 
<laughs> I had to replace a tire that was yeah, so much jewel. That's had, awesome. Um, so that thing, that thing, in addition to walking, like yeah. I'm cruising on that thing, and that's like if I want to go 10k, that's my vehicle yeah. of choice. So. How rough of a street can it handle? Oh, you can go off road. Oh, that. dude. Okay, that's <laughs> yeah. awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, they're really fun, man. Matt, I have this. I have this clip, man. This was the first one minute of us coming to see you, so I knew you were down in the yard. But and this guy helped us out. But I couldn't understand anything that he was saying, man. Somebody up, come up on the road. Yes. Rocky. 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 Joe. Joe. Bless up, Rocky. Thank you. How long did it take you until you could just comfortably understand all the patois? It's so cool, man. They speak English, but you need a translator. I needed you to translate, but it was English. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, I mean, it really is a language, right? Yeah. It's one of those it's very interesting with patois because it's like it's like a straddling that line between a language and yeah. it's sort of its own thing. So like in the local newspaper, I don't know if you know this, but they, they write it in, in English, but when they're quoting local people, it's written in Patwa. No way. So okay, okay. They, they completely treat it like another language and, you know, most Jamaicans can speak Jamaican English yeah. and then they can speak Patwa and it's, it's a very interesting thing. And there's not much literature out there on how to... Okay. Learn yep. navigate. Yep. I feel like someone should really do that. There's a couple of good YouTube videos on how to do oh, it. Oh, okay. You know, the, the, how the language is built. But yeah, it took me a lot. I'm still learning. I'm, okay. I'm, it never ends. Uh, Jamaicans, there's always different slang uh, when you come back, even after a few months. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's different kind of cool things to say. or And um, especially in, in Thomas there. Yeah. You know, even every little parish has its own accent too. So I'm still trying to keep up. Um, I guess it's just practice of being there. And I talk to the family all the time on the phone or on WhatsApp. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, watching the footage again and again of Moko, I get the chance to replay if I didn't catch Oh, them. sure. Right? So oh, yeah, I'll yeah, yeah. Study. There might be something I completely missed when I was there right beside him. And then I'm listening again yeah. and I go, oh, that's what he's talking about. Okay. Oh, okay. But it's a mission. I still don't catch everything. Yeah. I'm so fascinated by language. That's like one of my key inspirations to travel, even if I have no idea what. You can just take a plane flight and you're like in a totally diff different world. It's so cool. Man. Do you have anything that you, any kind of project that's focusing on Indonesia? Had you ever thought to maybe keep yourself open for like a, a new friend like Rasta Moko? Indo Indo version. Yeah, I, um, I'm sure someone's asked you that like before. Maybe there's not any exact equivalent like that. That's yeah. such a <laughs> crazy thing. It's, yeah. But definitely, as far as making other content um, for my other channel, which is you know food travel related as, as well. So yeah, yeah. Shot some stuff in Sumatra. Um, but yeah, more sort of me exploring. I don't have any awesome one specific person working with them yeah. or anything like that. But yeah, it would be cool. You know, it's like a, you probably have the same thing. You got a list of interesting ideas you want to follow down and make yeah. content about. Yeah. And, you know, the list just grows into hundreds and hundreds so you're just yeah. thinking, oh, wow, I, I'm never going to get all these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, that reminds me, Matt. Let me give you the... So Matt is a guy into like a ton of different things. I met him in Jamaica and we met for a specific purpose, making specific videos. But during the trip, I was inspired by all of Matt's varied interests. And one of them that sounded the most cool, most interesting to me is Earthly Eats. I don't actually know so much about it and maybe it's a newer project for Matt. But Matt, would you mind telling me again some of your passion about what inspired you to make Earthly Eats? Yeah, Earthly Eats is, well, I kind of came up with a tagline lately, so it's surf and surf from the ends of the earth. Okay. And 
I I don't know how I keep falling into this food thing, but I guess I'm interested in it. And <laughs> yes. I'm not really a foodie in the classical sense, like going to tons of restaurants or knowing how to cook or this yeah, or that. Yeah. But I am very interested in the, I guess before this is even a term, what they call the catch and cook. Yeah, yeah. Right? Oh, okay. okay. Yep. But the flip of it is I suck at that stuff. I don't know how to do it. I'm okay. not particularly extremely outdoorsy. Oh, okay, but okay. I'd love to learn about it. Yeah, so yeah. It's really sort of learning this catch and cook all over the world, different people, different places, and yeah. gaining skills and getting more connected to, to food and the culture across the world. That's awesome, man. Something you said just now, I think we ha we can relate a little bit on that. Like, I am, whether I like it or not, my small YouTube channel is now basically stuck to food food reviews, food investigation, and I have food in videos because I love food. I always, on trips with Mark, I'm always just talking to people. I actually don't care that much when we get to eat the food because I know we're going to eat sometime, so I don't even... <laughs> but, yeah, that's awesome that you that you just said almost the same thing. Like, I guess I just yeah, keep getting just... grouped in. But, yeah. Like, Not, thanks, man. Getting up there as well. Like, it's so hard starting at the beginning. Yeah. You know, starting from zero is so, so tough. So I, I'm amazed with anyone who's been consistent with it and built it up and built it up. So it, it's awesome to see your channel rolling along. Thanks, man. I guess, like, maybe Mark was just before you as far as getting widely known on YouTube, but both of you have been doing videos for back from the times when YouTube was very different than yeah. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. yeah, it's a grind, but yeah, if you enjoy doing it, I think, I mean, probably like yourself, Yeah. even if it wasn't a, a job or career or whatever, yeah. I'd probably still be making it for fun. Yeah. I always like shooting videos. Cool, man. Right? And so whether you're making a dollar or you're not, I think I'd be doing it anyway. Because my whole life was making videos and not getting anything for it. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you were really interested to start a TV channel. I remember you told me that. Right? And you even pitched yeah, I mean, ideas for TV shows. Yeah. Oh, like, okay. I went to school for broadcasting, right? Like, I'm a oh, yeah. radio TV broadcast graduate. Okay. College. So back then, yeah. we were learning on tape cameras and like, I had the idea for that show, like an ITAL cooking show, and oh, then I went okay. and found him, oh, okay. found a, someone that could be the host of the show, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I sort of had the idea first, and then I met Mako um, to sort of play that, play that role. Yeah. Yeah. And but uh, the TV world's great for all, man. Dude. It's hard to get in the door. I'm, I'm sure. And the space is so much more limited than something like YouTube, obviously. But then you prove your idea and then, you know, it's like, oh, you shot me down, everyone said no, but now look how many people watched it. You should have said yes. Yeah, but yeah. now I'm happy they said no. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it, it wouldn't be the same thing if it yeah. was some TV show where they're telling people how to act or do this or that or whatever. Yeah. So I think it's cool. The way, I love YouTube the way you can just do whatever on it. It's awesome. So creative, so free, so... So open, you know? Yeah. The, the first few weeks when I uploaded the first few videos, I remember, so I had already started my channel, but I asked Mark, like, so do you think that your channel takes maybe of this specific niche, does it take maybe, I, I must have said something like 40% or 30%. He's like, are you kidding me? He's like, I bet my channel is 0.1% of what's out there. And I, and I don't... So maybe I was still just imagining the audience as something like a TV audience. Like, all the niches are just very cut and dry. And, and thankfully, you mentioned Instagram. I already had an audience to show those videos to. And I guess some people were gracious and subscribed to the new channel. So there was a little bump there at the beginning that kind of cool. set it off. Yeah. I'm asking as someone who's really still just starting, man, how have you kept yourself motivated? 
I don't even think COVID, COVID is just one more thing. When you've been doing this kind of job for as long as you have, how do you keep yourself interested? I think I just see the bigger picture now. Hmm. Uh, I mean, if I'm talking about trying to get Earthly Eats to the level of where yeah, yeah. Rosh Kitchen is, I just sort of, I can believe in it a bit more now, now that oh, we, okay. we have some success with the one channel, whereas yep. before it was very, just sort of naked and I, I don't know if it's going to work. And then for the first seven years, it didn't work. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I think having, building any kind of an audience over the long term, it's, it's taught me that, oh yes, you can do that again. And like we just talked about it, there is an audience that's interested in this type of content that I'm making, even yeah. if it doesn't have more or who's the man, and yeah. even if it's not in Jamaica, like, there's going to be a segment of people that still like, maybe it's the way that I shoot your edit, or maybe it's the way I put stuff together, or the way that I'm telling a story, or me on camera, or whatever it is. Like, there's an audience for that. So I find, yeah, it's motivating. That helps keep me motivated to kind of keep going, even if there's not a lot of subs, or there's no no money at all, or you're just, yeah. You know, doing it for the love of it. That's kind of keeps me going is knowing that, you know what, if you just keep going and you enjoy it, it's going to get somewhere. Just be patient. <laughs> um, yeah, anyone starting on YouTube stuff for money, I always just go, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I go, you, yeah. yeah, sorry, it's not going to work out for you. <laughs> you know? It's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you yeah. got to do it because you like it. Yeah, and, yeah. And, um, of course. And, you know, there's a lot of people making a living, which is awesome, but uh, you got to do it because you love it, right? Yeah, yeah. The few times I've fielded questions like this, I find explaining it in terms of professional sports is pretty accurate. Like, how many kids play basketball and love playing basketball? And how many kids are actually on the Chicago Bulls? Like, 25 yes. out of 25 yes. million. It's a pretty... The numbers are, I'm sure, roughly accurate. <laughs> like, yeah. can I ask you about our own trip together in Jamaica? We were hanging yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, dude. Awesome. We got to hang out for like almost a week. I think we met up with you in three different parishes. It's cool to have that kind of trip because we can just digest afterwards. But when you're there, it's like every day, every day. Oh. It's intense. Um, is there, was there like one more place if we had had one more day? Because there's always that feeling of, oh, this is so fun. I wish we had one more day, one more day. Where would you have taken us on that one more day? I think I would have taken you guys up to spot in the Blue Mountains. Oh, okay. Vision. Oh. Because there's a wicked, yeah. amazing views, obviously, all over there. But there's a yeah. community called School of Vision that oh. um, we visited a couple times. And just a really cool Rastafari community with insane views, great food. Uh, the people that run it are super nice. And visually, it's just pretty pretty stunning to you overlooking Kingston. And you can see the ocean. And you oh. can hike to the mountains and waterfalls. And, and great food. And they do all... Um, so I think we got a day I would have brought you guys there. Oh. Okay, Matt. I remember Moko blew my mind with this creation and you were yeah. just obviously you had seen him do something like this before. He's just like mixing fresh fruit and then comes milk and beer. It was just awesome. What was that? Yeah, yeah that was the, <laughs> the sour soft kiss. Juice. <laughs> juice. Right? Oh yeah, everything's called juice. <laughs> yeah, or tea. I'm so glad he made it because yeah, yeah. it's really also takes zero direction. Like trying to plan breakfast, even that, like yeah, yeah. fuck. You just have to roll. But I'm like, Uncle, we gotta do something special for these guys. Please do the sour sop Guinness drink <laughs> with condensed milk and sour sop juice and Guinness beer yeah. all mixed up. It looks like weird brown foamy milkshake. Yeah. That's such a good drink that should not taste good. Yes. It, gross. it was delicious. And yeah, yeah, it it should not taste so good. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, I'm so uh, glad you guys enjoyed that. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I've never made it at home, right? You're yeah, yeah. I was thinking 
because I live in Thailand, the the exotic fruits would be a little more approachable or procurable. I don't have soursop though. The Thai Thai can grow it. They just don't. I don't know why they don't drink it. If you wouldn't mind, could I answer any question? If you want to be nice on topic or throw me off totally, I thought that would be yeah, interesting. Um, once you were allowed to travel out of Thailand, what's the first ah. story video idea that you want to do out of the country? What's the first thing that pops in your head? I think after this year, something we could all think about is how just in a moment, all of our plans could be taken away. What if, what if we just had to pick like one more big trip? So you better do that one soon. I've kind of been thinking about that. So for, for my whole life, Mongolia has always been like a super exotic destination. And I know it's super cold. Mongolia is super cold, but if I can get a visa to Mongolia, I'm going to go there as soon as I can. It's just like so far out there. Sounds rad. I, have you, I painted my whole house, like main floor, and, and it was a grind work, and I yeah. listened to the entire biography of Chinggis Khan. There's an amazingly well done audio book of Chinggis Khan, and it, I, as someone who didn't know anything about Mongolia, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was just wild. So you've probably researched him a bit if you're interested in Mongolia, but this, this biography is crazy. They're one of the more fun biographies I ever read was called Venice to Zanadu. Do you remember if that was the name of it? It was a huge book. Venice to Zanadu. And it was a... Oh, you know what? It... Marco Polo's biography, oh. not Genghis Khan. Oh, okay. That's another epic one that I should do a review yeah. as well. So I'll tell you the link to this, this Genghis okay. Khan one because it was so well done. Cool. There's so much of his life that is documented yeah. and so much... Um, ah. So much history, even when they went and attacked into Europe. Yeah, yeah. They have written history, their reactions to being attacked by Mongol hordes. So there's so much detail wow. around this, this life and all the grandkids and grandkids and the influence they had on the world. It's, yeah, it's yeah. really crazy. Ah, oh, that's cool, man. It's awesome seeing how many different passions you have. I think I picked up on that immediately. Like, People tend to think like uh, the channel is fairly close to the guy's real life, just maybe more of that. But I think I recognized you have like so many different interests and you could make a channel of so many different things. And that was the main thing that you inspired me with. Like I think I noticed shooting with Ross Moko was just one small part of your varied interest. That was awesome, man. Well, I hope when you get your channel going, I mean, that's the amazing thing about YouTube, right? Like, <clears> once you build a following, then you start branching. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Like, you love biking. Like, it, it could totally shift into, like, a, this is my, like, biking channel. You yeah. Know? It can totally go that way. Or I'm, at least it's an element of it. Yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. The channel that I had always wanted to start was something like, um, okay, this is not... This is not hard to think of, but I would ride from here and meet Mark on the trip and he would have to give me three weeks notice because I would cycle like 2000 kilometers. But how epic would that be, right? Because I would love to do that. And I would have to, you know, carry a camera to document it. But yeah. I would love to do that kind of... Mark's channel is just about the food, but we get to go to crazy places like in the world, let alone the food. So to, to make a whole nother channel to document how to get there, that was, I still would love to do that. Well, that's, that's awesome, you should do that. I, I'm so happy even with Ralph's Kitchen, I can do a surf or a skateboard vlog once in a while. Oh yeah, and yeah. no one's really been like, oh, this student on the channel. Or like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like it doesn't cool. get the views. Yeah, yeah. But I just think, oh, I'm totally gonna pay to skate right now. <laughs> yes, dude, yes. <laughs> yes. Maybe 30 bucks. I'm gonna pay to skate. Yes. <laughs> oh, I did have a professional say directly to me, like, Joel, don't even sign up for any of these races. You can go make 
a YouTube video of you riding to go have coffee over there, and you can actually get paid for that. You don't need to risk your life in all these races, and he's like, don't even join a team. Don't even think about it. Keep doing it. And, of course, I still want to be on a team, and like, wow, it's so cool being on a cycling team, but a professional cyclist said something like what you just said. Dude, if you, if you are stoked to do that, then it's, you've already succeeded. Like, don't stop. Yeah, someday on Earth we eat some of you doing some other scary stuff. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, for now we're gonna grow it. I, I was really excited this week because we hit up to 10,000 subs. I was like, yeah! Don't! Congrats. <laughs> Congratulations, Matt. That's so cool, man. Dude. Yeah. It is good yeah. to see you, Matt. Good job, man. Yeah, it. super uh, cool. Good job you soon. Good okay. luck with what you're doing. I'll, uh, Thanks, man. I'll keep up with you on the, on the panels. I'm gonna go try to track down some ingredients in the market and make a make a beverage that would make make you and Moko proud. <laughs> nice. Alright, brother. I'll chat with you later. Enjoy. Have a great day. Okay. Experience. Matt, peace, bro. Enjoy the weekend. Okay. You enjoy. Bye. Peace, Matt. Really cool to see you. And again, thanks for the shared motivation. Thanks for going back. Remind me of our fun trip to Jamaica. And hope to meet you there it sounds like though we will probably meet up here maybe maybe end of this year but anyways dude thank you for your time today super cool i've i've learned a bit but gotten a lot of inspiration from you as always and anyone watching this check out matt panzer his new channel earthly eats so cool so much potential really i will say potential. Matt has so much experience and now he's bringing it to yet another one of his projects. So cool. Excited to see what's going to happen with Earthly Eats. You can find all the links, all the info below. I'm lucky to meet him and we met in Jamaica with Mark as part of Team Migrationology. Again, more links, more info down below and I hope you are having a great day today. Thanks for watching. Peace.